Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my home studio. I'm Ben Crow. I'm going to be finally, finally finishing a, a bass guitar build today. Uh, ran out of the correct spec hardware uh, right at the end of Monday's live stream. So we're back here. It's Thursday, one o'clock. Uh, I had hoped to do it on Wednesday and uh, uh, of course, double booked myself. So there we go. So uh, where we ended up last week was I had <clears throat> I had the correct uh, 250k parts, but the the thread on the shank was tiny. It was designed specifically for a for a scratch plate material, and uh, I did not want to put in the wrong parts just to save face, and then it wouldn't sound right and all that jazz. So so here we are. Now, my plan for today is to do this, finish the wiring. It's a relatively simple, straightforward system. It is just a uh, two volumes and a tone, and you're essentially using the, the two volumes to blend each pickup in and out. No switches, none of that stuff. We, we will play around a little bit and, uh, and see what can be got uh, out of this instrument, bearing in mind I am not. I am not a, a bass player or a musician, really. Um, and then after that, I've got, depending on how much time there is, I've got a little bit of a side project that I've been wanting to do for a long time on the channel. And uh, I, need to, I need to learn more about other people's guitars and how other factories are making them and what's going on underneath the hood. Now, repairs and restorations are a very good way to do that. Um, but Oftentimes when you're doing a repair on a customer's guitar, you don't want to spend very much time. Uh, you, you don't want to do more than the customer wants you to do. Uh, if you, for example, are replacing a nut and yet go in and take the pickups out and then drop the pickup and create a dent and you say, oh, I'm sorry, I dropped a pickup. And they're like, why did you have the pickups out? Mm, intellectual curiosity. So what I'm doing now is I'm going around buying the odd guitar so that I can do whatever I want with it. And then I will take it apart uh, down to bare um, essentials, take pickups out, etc., and see what we've got. Now, some of them will be relatively inexpensive instruments and some of them will be, I don't know, high-end Les Pauls and Gibsons and handmade. You know, the, there is no limit in reality. Uh, so I'm going to start that with, uh, with a, uh, a Hofner Marauder, uh, very cool guitar that I wanted a long time ago, and I found one recently. Now the best thing about it is once I'm done with them, uh, many of these instruments are going to end up being raffled off. So I'm just going to do what I want, set it up, check out the fretwork, etc., which I'm hoping we'll see today. Look at the pickups, look at the wiring, uh, comment on the quality of the hardware and all of these things and uh, and then release the instrument back into the world once I have learned what I need to off it. Anyway, this is a live stream so there are people watching currently, <laughs> currently an even hundred people uh, watching so there we go. Uh, super chats, I will absolutely answer your super chats. That's the best way to get to guarantee that I will see what is happening. Uh, the chat is going through at a rate of six whatever that means. Hold on, there's a little question mark there. What does it mean? The chat rate of the stream at the most recently available time still doesn't let me know what a chat rate actually means. Uh, maybe six a minute? Looks faster than that. Anyway, the chat keeps on going through. If I see a question, I will answer it. Um, but uh, anyway, anyway, okay, forecast drums. Has anyone else got a fuzzy mic feed when Ben talks? Mike sounds hissy. Okay, cool. So we've made some changes. Uh, give me a second to fix. Okay. So I'm, we're playing around with a new with a new microphone here. I'm going to put the. Uh, that's the overhead microphone. Testing. Okay. Let's see what that does. Ooh, blew your eardrums off. 
How is that? So the sensitivity uh, is quite up. And uh, Talitha was really complaining during the last edit of the last stream that uh, she could hear absolutely everything that was going, every sniffle. I've still got, a, uh, I'm still not feeling very well and cough and sneeze, etc. So uh, is this any better? Okay. Uh, BB says the mic was absolutely fine. Taha Mike's talking about reverb. No sound problems. Metric. So, Tahu Mike, Tutum Carmen, Wolford Guitars, Robert R, Casey McDermott from Theta Guitars in the house, VCS the Bone Cruncher, uh, Ross Goodley, Paul Needs, uh, Keith Thompson, Beth McKellar, Daniel Marquez, BB Guitars. There's a bunch of us here. And uh, there we go. Sorry, Ross. Okay, is that better? Okay, go to the road, he says, Benz, what's your, what are your thoughts on Fender's micro adjustment? Uh, I'm not really allowed to have thoughts really at this point because I haven't spent all that much time playing with it. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think that uh, that is now, there we go. That's now on silent. I think that I don't like it. I don't personally like it. I think that uh, there are more physical ways of fixing those issues uh, that don't leave gaps and things, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, okay. Uh, failure asks, how's the tooth? So yeah, this morning it was dentist stuff. My first ever filling um, was yesterday, as was my wife's first ever filling. And after the fact, I'm thinking we've got the same dentist. Are we potentially maybe just, uh, is there a quota for the amount of fillings each month? And uh, they just decided that we were it this, this year. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it wasn't fun, uh, but it is what it is. Okay. I need to open a window. It's very hot in here. Oh, I know. Is this heater on? No, the heater's off. Okay. I suppose we should just crack on with the stream, shouldn't we? Okay, Chip Prue says, morning all, how's it across the pond? Micro tilt, not enough surface to surface contact, shim it properly, that's from Paul Needs. That is what I wanted to say. Um, but at the same time, I've had, uh, Les Paul's in the building uh, where there was absolutely zero contact, contact along the entire back of the tenon and, and it sounded like a Les Paul. So it is what it is. Now. Yeah, there we go. So last week I, well, <laughs> earlier in the week, I made enough room for the, for the potentiometers. I repainted the shielding paint where it was required, and that was it. And now, yes, and now I've got some sort of medium shaft pots that will do that will do nicely. I think this part is going to be uh, rel over relatively quickly. Uh, now, please, guys, let me know what you think of uh, of my plans. Are you interested in seeing? Uh, are you interested in seeing me uh, dissect essentially other guitars on a semi regular basis on the channel? And uh, and if so, uh, which ones would be? Uh, which ones would be your, uh, which would get your vote? Goady the roadie is uh, goading me. 
about the ground wire. There is a ground wire. I feel that I should probably store my nut block just a little bit closer to the bench. The amount of time I have to reach over while I'm actually holding a guitar. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a weird one. Yes, definitely rather too long than too thin. That'll do nicely. Zach Vega says, I'd love a series where you dismantle and inspect guitars. I had an obsession with, uh, as a kid, taking apart my toys and figuring out how they work. Are you perchance an engineer at this stage in your life? Um, oftentimes that's, uh, that's how that goes. And yes, I, uh, I think that makers and creatives and engineers and things, that is often how they get into it. It's, it's, you know, how exactly does the ball joint on this Barbie doll work? Rip the arms off and then your, your, your mother thinks you're a, a psychopath. Um, <clears throat> I'm not talking, I'm not actually talking from experience. It sounds funny though. Uh, King Bob's guitar works says, why would we be dissecting said guitars? So my long-term goal is actually to have, for example, a, uh, uh, a device to test the hardness of metal. So we can see what is this bridge made out of on this, you know, early 2000s Les Paul. Um, what, what is the nut material, how well have they wired it, how, um, how has the wiring kept up over the last uh, 20 years, or <sighs> has it needed refretting, how much refretting, how soft are the frets, and this is a big thing with, with a lot of um, production guitars, the fret wire is one of the cheaper is, is one of the ways where people save money, essentially. Cheap nickel silver fret wire is, has got very little of the stuff that makes good fret wire hard. And, uh, you know, whipping those frets out and uh, is, is, a, is a something that needs to be done. So actually being able to dial in and say, these are the materials, this is why. Um, but on top of that, it's this is the dimension here. For some of them, I'll go around and actually make an, if it's if it's required, do a physical drawing of of the item that uh, maybe people could download from Crimson. Um, you know, here's the outline, etc., etc., etc. I mean, we sell, we do sell plans at, at headquarters, so uh, yeah, maybe each guitar, if it's of, of interest, would be turned into plans. <sighs> neck depth, neck dimension, neck shape. Yeah, we'll order that. Mm -hmm. 
First super chat of the day from Stian TV. It says, hi there, if installing a bridge on a holy piece of wood and one of the screws matches a hole, would you drill and dowel it or something else? Um, <laughs> hard luck. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I, I would, depending on the size of the hole, this is the thing you, I, I might drill and dowel it. I might, it's all going to be hidden underneath the bridge, so it's fair game. Fill with a little bit of resin or dust and glue, depending on the size of the hole. Um, so, uh, yeah. Most bridges, it is wise. Okay, if it's a top mount bridge where the strings are in the bridge itself, uh, rather than through body or a, a tailpiece, then yeah, use all of the available screws and go to that trouble. <sighs> if it's got a trapeze tailpiece or if it is through body stringing, etc., the, the strings themselves are going to hold the bridge in place and missing a screw out of five or six, I wouldn't bother, worry about it too much. Uh, Sandy Dreads, Dross Dex, sorry, says the difference between my brother and I was that when I took things apart and put them back together again, they still worked afterwards. That would have been funny if, you'd, if it had been the other way around, but uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, while the soldering iron is heating up, we have got a ground wire coming from the bridge. Uh, that is our bridge pickup. This is our neck pickup. Volume, volume. So those are uh, uh, A pots and that's a, a linear. So audio pots and a linear pot there for the tone. Uh, I'm going to be using a 47 capacitor. If I remember where I put them. <laughs> uh, chaos. Ah, there we go. Discos2 says, Would be cool to see you pull apart 70s Japanese guitars, Tokai, Taisko, etc. I absolutely agree. I love those instruments. I love the design and the, uh, the aesthetic of a lot of them, and actually the quality. Uh, one of the best guitars I ever had, and one that I regret um, selling on, was a um, um, Japanese Telecaster. Just incredible instrument. It really was. How have I already been talking for 19 minutes? I don't know. Stephen Hay says, I hope the name brands don't get irritated, but the idea is good, plus a benefit for the company's fresh pair of eyes. A lot of the time it's going to be older stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it not from a point of view of denigrating the companies necessarily. I'm a fan of guitars, I'm a fan of guitar building, and, uh, and I want to learn as much as I can as possible out of how they do things and, about, and why, why they do what they do. Uh, and that's that's the thing. So, you know, I've got some really interesting guitars coming through that we could do that. Um, so if we all if we all learn a little bit from it, uh, then then that's great. And most very most importantly, it absolutely gives me an excuse to buy a hell of a lot of guitars and then uh, you know make them make them available to everybody else. Uh, I don't necessarily have the space nor the budget to own hundreds of guitars. I wish I did, but um, but this way I at least get to experience a lot of them. So yeah, here we go. Sweet tea. Hey, how you doing? Uh, came with the super chat says, hi Ben, have a wonderful day, my friend. Peace and love off to work. I go, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, have a good day. We may well, we probably won't be around by the time you're done. But uh, yeah, sweetie, have a fantastic day. Um, okay, 
So, there we go. Scalper blade, wire trimmer, and uh, <sighs> so I'm going to have the You tend to want to have the earth wire star off one point so you don't end up with a ground loop. Uh, so I'm just out of, just, I'm going to do that on the central, central one. So for now, let's chop my ground. It's an absolute pleasure, Thompson. I, I love it. I love that I get to do this. And every single time, every, 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 every single time I do anything, I'm learning and improving myself. Yes, I know this is cloth wire. I should just push it back. The wax coating confused me. <laughs> Fine. Uh, Tim Ziegler, uh, yes, at the moment, but that sh you should still be getting email replies. Um, give me a second. I'm going to just uh, text somebody. Um, do 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 do. There we go. <laughs> uh, okay, so. No. I plugged in my soldering iron. It turns out the extension lead wasn't plugged in. That, that sucks. Where's that going then? There. I tell you, I can't wait until my uh, uh, the new workshop is sorted out. Uh, it's uh, I've been burning the candle at both ends uh, working on it, and uh, yeah, chaos, chaos and carnage. The big units come in with a super chat. Says sorry, I can't stick around teaching again today. Put on eleven hundred miles this week and lectured for thirty-two hours and still not done. Have a great day. Sounds 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 like a profitable week hopefully uh, as long as the as long as the cost of the uh, <sighs> fuel is counted into uh, what you actually charge um, this is the thing okay so let me just find my wiring diagram very basic Two volumes, one tone, uh, and an output jack. That's all we need. Here's the jack. And have a good day teaching. 
<laughs> Electric Lady Guitars Devon UK says greetings from a tree in the middle of Dartmoor. Looking forward to watching this tomorrow as the chainsaws are too noisy. Uh, get yourself some icy tunes, my friend. Uh, in fact, chainsaws. I mean, get yourself some icy tunes. Okay. We're going to need to sort out the back plate as well once wiring is done. I'm just looking for the jack plate. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, as much as possible, I put uh, the jack already on the plate. It just keeps things grounded. Uh, one thing I do need is a washer, come to think of it. Casey McDermott from Theta Guitars, uh, thanks very much, says, Ben, on a 22 fret guitar, how many frets would you need to have to fill or recut before you de delaminate and make a new fretboard. I'm trying to make peace. <sighs> there are a few things, there are few things more frustrating than tripping over tools in what's supposed to be a tidy workshop than having to redo work over and over again. And sometimes there is you just need to say, I've learned a hell of a lot, but we're done now. Um, when I when I first did start building guitars, I was doing it on a seriously constrained budget. I had zero money, period. And uh, that would literally have been a, a major part of the equation for me. How much money have I actually spent on fret wire is and rosewood? Now you you, you can we don't want to give into the sunk cost fallacy. We don't. Uh, the sunk cost fallacy is hey, I've already put in so much time, I'm gonna keep on going no matter what. Uh, I've put in so much money into this thing, I'm gonna keep on going no matter the fact that it's gonna look like a dog's dinner at the end. This doesn't really apply here because uh, once you replace the frets, um, it should be fairly invisible that you've had to do that. So, yeah, it comes down to an aesthetic thing. If you've already replaced, you know, even five or six frets and had to recut them, uh, the, if you've only got two more to do, I'd do the two more. Um, but if you're doing it as a learning a process, I would sometimes consider just starting again. Uh, taking a fretboard off and starting again could be a great experience, but it's not something that you want to do unless you absolutely have to, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, I'm just going in and uh, I've just tinned the ends of the three ground wires. Put a little bit of solder on the, on the iron. Warm up the part. And then put some solder on that. 
And if you do the same on the end of the wire, you don't end up burning what you're working on. Uh, because it'll, it'll solder together very, very rapidly. I know it's not going to be necessary in one of these lugs, but I always forget which damn one. Same thing on there. camera. Was it Sweet Tea that says that he's got a, a chat bot? Um, reading, or he's, he's, he's got something reading the chat to him as he streams uh, in his ear. That could be, uh, that could be horrendously distracting, but also potentially useful. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yes, Bartissimo, a Thursday stream. I didn't quite finish what I wanted to uh, on Monday due to uh, poor planning as much as anything else. So here we are. And this is the beautiful thing. If I've got, if I've got a, um, if I'm not expecting to have somebody sitting on the computer reading all the chat out to me, then I can actually do streams whenever I fancy it. Which, uh, which makes me happy. JS Truckin' and Guitar says the chatbot only reads super chats and donations. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd uh, <laughs> I suppose with the speed of the chat, even this uh, it would be, uh, yeah, it would be too much. Um, so there we go. All right, so I've just grounded those two wires. I'm going to have uh, all of the earth wires go to that central pot. I tend to do the ground wiring first before anything else happens. And this is going to be over super quick. Now, I do need to apologize to those of you who were ready yesterday for me to do a stream. Uh, it, I had, uh, I had said that I was going to do it on the Wednesday and that didn't happen because I had completely forgotten that I had uh, a dental appointment booked. 
Mrs. Bun, how art thou? Hot. <laughs> I know, it's why I married you. It's one of many, many, many reasons I, I married you. Married you. Well, that too, that too. Did you guys watch that? That's, that, that was somebody putting their foot in it. Um, <laughs> you have to pick up the uh, smaller child. Okay, have a good drive. And thank you for my tea. It's a very hot day today and uh, Tony's been doing all sorts of stuff in the garden. Uh, where are we? Yeah, let's get this wiring done as fast as possible. One day I'm going to do a gorgeous, gorgeous wiring job. It's going to be supremely attractive. Everybody's going to say, oh my gosh, Ben, that was a work of art. And uh, that day is not today. When I'm dealing with short wire, I do prefer to use a scalpel blade uh, to take the shielding off. Dave Lewis says, I've had 69 strand speaker cable stuck in my eye years ago. Crikey. Uh, maybe I should put some uh, some goggles on. Is that what you guys are getting at? You're talking about my lack of PPE. Tim Ziegler says, Ben, how about your new stream going for scholarships to struggling Crimson students? How about struggling Crimson Luthiers? Um, uh, most students at Crimson are not, by definition, are struggling. Our classes are... There's no way... Our classes are not inexpensive. Uh, they are also, however, about half the price of comparable courses in other places, so I feel okay about that. Um, but, uh, yeah. What am I doing? Uh, let's go to the tone. Uh, 
Stephen Bradley says, why can't I keep the tip of my soldering iron to stay fastened? It's just a screw, surely. Uh, whatever you do, don't try and super glue it. <laughs> yeah. Stephen Hay has got a tip for us. If you're on a budget and need wire to use on your pots and stuff, uh, pop down to your local computer repair shop and ask for some. They have miles of the stuff generally for free. Uh, I absolutely agree. Old USB 2 cables are great sources of uh, multi-core shielded cable. New USB uh, cables, USB-C, etc., have got an insane amount of uh, wires in there, and they're all very, very tiny wires. Uh, I'm going to... I'm, I've now changed to a point where I'm using really thick wire. Uh, I think the thinner stuff that is often used in guitar building, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not great. See, I lifted the goggles up to talk to you, and I'm getting smoke in my eyes and all that jazz. I should have... I've got the windows open, actually. But still. Oh, Cat5 cable is also... Yes, Ian, Ian M says that. Uh, I've used Cat5 in the past as well. Now you'll notice I'm cleaning the tip of the soldering iron every single time I put it down and sometimes uh, in between. Uh, it's quite an important part of the job. Uh, now I am aware also that I'm using a very cheap, very basic soldering iron here. Uh, 40 watts though, fairly hot. I like them hot. Uh, yeah, I like them hot. Um, as we've just established, I suppose. Yeah, that's a little bit of a mess. but I'm pretty sure it's all solid. Okay, so at this point I'm going to take uh, the advice from... from the big unit who says you should always uh, screw a piece of grounding wire to the shielding uh, inside your Faraday cage. I'm going to do that. Uh, Patty, you're hilarious. Uh, drill, drill. Okay, the power drill is uh, in the other room, so let's just use something made in the 1880s. Why don't we? Always start with a braddle. This one was made for me by um, Brian over at BC Woodworks. He's fantastic. Every time I move this camera at the moment, I'm seeing a reflection of myself in the window there, and it, I'm quietly freaking out every time. I apparently am easily startled today. Stephen Bradley says again with the heart. Yeah, he spotted that. This 
the only problem with two-handed drills is they require <laughs> they require what you're working on to be stable. Damn it! That is uh, absolutely not. Fine, I'll go find a power drill. Hold on. Oh, Fukumi says, Ben just switched to flint tools. Those have thousands of years of heritage and no rust. Ha! <laughs> I, I actually do have... Um, I do have a... A stone axe that, uh, that came into the tool shop at some point. And I think it's... Uh, I think it's genuine. So that's quite cool. Um, I was tempted yesterday by some uh, Incan mace heads that were in a local antique shop at a, at a bit of a steal. But I mean, there's no way you can justify buying an Incan mace head now, can you? Even if it is half the retail price. There we go. So, in a recent stream, somebody suggested that I should uh, solder a nice loop together in the end of the wire through which to uh, yeah through which to drive the screw i do think it's somewhat overkill but uh, yeah it could be quite cool so uh, so let's do that Monotone, cool name. It says Ben. Hold on. It says Ben. What's your opinion on Federer bases? I didn't do that right. Um, oh, I hit the camera. Uh -huh. Very well made. Although I have not had the experience of actually playing one in person. So uh, yeah, I can't really give an educated opinion, unfortunately. So while this is still relatively pliable, I made a little loop and I'm going to solder it together at the end. Helping hands. Helping hands. Hmm. No, I can't use my helping hands today. Uh, I managed to they're covered in, in dirty water. Uh, I had a little pot resting on the side from where I that I used to clean the brush that had the shielding paint in it and of course I dropped it just before the stream all over the helping hands what can I say A foolish There we go. So that's actually wicked solder somewhere around the loop, which is quite cool. I do think this is uh, this is overkill. Uh, Ian M says, "Sigh, all right, I'm out. Uh, goodbye, Ian. Have a have a good rest of your day."
Forest Pfeiffer says they're late again. We haven't actually been going for that long. Uh, but welcome to the stream. So essentially this, this loop of wire is now being held um, against the shielding paint. And then I'm going to solder that to the back of our pot here. And we will end up with a Faraday cage that is connected properly to the ground. Soldering tip, if this is from Tutankhamen, if you need to hold a wire steady, put the solder reel on it. That's a very cool one. Okay, so we've got ground going to the center pot from the bridge, from the Faraday cage, and from the other pots. I'm now going to go from that pot all the way out uh, to my jack. Olympic 63 says, think I'm going to miss this old workshop. It's very relatable. It's essentially, I'm actually moving into a smaller space. This bit is going to be slightly narrower on, on the other end, um, but it's going to allow me to have timber storage around the walls in here. And I'm going to have in this area, a couple of islands, maybe even three islands with, with uh, tools on them so that it's going to be a much more effective space for everything else. And there's storage space in there for um, my vintage tools and sort of just collection of stuff and the old books. Um, all of my books on, uh, on guitars um, have all been in storage, literally just in boxes for ages. And that's, uh, that's horrific. I want to read these things. Uh, uh, you know, right now we're working on uh, new guitars for, for Crimson, uh, as a sort of range of production guitars and things like that. And I don't have access to my research materials. So all of that's going to be out here. But um, the actual workshop space, uh, the bit where I do the bulk of what's on camera is going to be smaller than I've currently got. <sighs> For what it's worth. Okay. The Fenrisian's sweatshop, you've not missed that much. Um, I, however, forgot to tin my soldering iron. And whenever you do that, you're like, hmm, is my soldering iron broken? What's wrong?
unlike on Jasmine's guitar, with this jack, it's absolutely patently obvious which is which. I can't believe I wired up a jack socket wrong the other day. Paul Needs says, uh, at failure, this ground loop thing is purported to be a bit of a myth, and all the grounds on this emanates from uh, out front point, so more like a star. I'm, I've never experienced a ground loop, to my knowledge, but I've also always avoided them. Uh, I'd be very interested to hear what the big unit says. Okay. Okay. Ha. Gary Hardman says, Hi Ben, I just came back from watching Dave Simpson playing the river guitar. Superb. Thanks for sharing that. I, I, I lent him the guitar because he was in love with the guitar. I absolutely didn't think that he was going to make a video about it. Um, uh, but he did. I... Oh, you've just... <laughs> so, yesterday was Wednesday. We didn't have a video plan for yesterday. I don't know how, but it just slipped our mind. Uh, so Tuesday night, I came in uh, at basically no notice. And uh, I, I just made a... I, I needed to do something for a quick video for the midweek. And uh, I made a plectrum. In Brazilian Rosewood, which I actually enjoy, I really enjoy doing, and I, I, it's surprisingly comfortable being so chunky. But uh, the whole time I had Dave Simpson's video on loop, uh, I watched it sort of one and a half times during yeah, during that evening, and uh, it's so cool. It's so so cool. He's he's incredible. Um, so yeah, if you haven't yet checked that out, please do. Uh, Mark Guitar says, I've been repairing for a while and I've never found a ground loop in a guitar with shielding. Ground loops is what tail dragger pilots try to avoid. Oh, Matt Thurman, good luck with the doctor's appointment. Goth Rider Creation says, hey, bun two live streams in one week? Uh, have you upset Mrs. Bun? Does she want you out the house? Uh, if she, if that was the case, then it would be live streams at, uh, uh, uh in the evenings. And, uh, yeah, actually, so it's, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not in trouble that I know. All right. So the live out from the, uh, from the pickups go to the center lug on these. So essentially that means that when I'm using this volume, it's not going to affect anything on the, uh, on the bridge pickup and vice versa, because we're using a different lug to what you would normally use on a standard guitar. Uh, I don't know the why, uh, I just know the effect. Gody the Roadie says, I watched Dave Simpson once yesterday, listened to it once, and then watched it again today. I mean, that says it all.
Another soldering myth, if ground loops are a myth, is that uh, blowing on solder to cool it down uh, does anything bad. Uh, it's absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there is a little bit of moisture in your breath. That's not going to cause, that's not going to stick inside of the solder and uh, <laughs> We are not Superman. You might be. I'm not. I am not Superman. You know, I'm not blowing hard enough to uh, send my breath internally inside a molten liquid metal. Um, anything that hits the outside while it's still hot is just going to evaporate straight away. It's just a. It's just not a thing. <sighs> okay. Uh, okay. Fine. Just for fun, I'm going to take a section of the uh, cover off this length of wire. Carefully. Can you guys hear the fly? Okay, so that's twisted. Stephen Brody says, aha, discovered why my uh, soldering iron tip kept on coming off. That's a knackered screw. That'll do it. So I need to do the same thing just because I started. I'm uh, cutting off another section of shielding here. Yeah. I don't think this is going to make any major difference. Ha! No, I can't even. It's pointless. Um, <clears throat> so the white, the white lead I've got left isn't long enough to get all the way to my uh, uh, jack anyway. So let's just chop that off. Paul Need says, it's really good to see someone else solder incorrectly, even if their results are better than mine. Tried and failed for years. Um, what am I... Uh, please let me know if I am doing it incorrectly. Or what. This is... Uh, or what I'm doing that's supposed to be done another way. 
Dave Lewis says, my crimson straight edge. Oh, and it's just gone. My crimson notch straight edge for guitar has just arrived. This is the problem. I'm getting phone calls uh, while I'm live streaming. Okay, one, two, I'm not too happy with that joint. Let's just redo that. Yes, um, so I had the camera going directly over while I soldered that and uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't get in there enough to check what was happening. It wasn't good enough. Uh, no, I'm not, I don't bother with shrink tubing unless there's a uh, running the risk of a, um, of a short. None of this is moving around. I could do it to... Um, sorry, just letting this person know that I don't, I won't be able to call today. Um, Two, three, one, two, three. I just need to get another piece of white wire going through. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Waste not, want not. Okay, queries, questions. Uh, nothing wrong with your soldering bin. That's from Element Zero Guitars. I mean, there's definitely something wrong with it. It's um, ugly. Ugly, I tell you. But uh, yeah, I do want to work on that. What are the chances blue Kida dye will stain a mahogany body? Uh, very, very good. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what colour you get, potentially purple, depending on... Ah, I'm very glad that the microphone buttons and the uh, kill the stream buttons are on the other side of, on the opposite sides of the deck here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so when you're using a stain uh, on a darker wood, the colour of the wood underneath will come through and you don't necessarily know what it's going to look like. Uh, a, a blue a blue dye or a blue uh, stain will look blue on, on a white um, maple or something like that, but on mahogany's, yeah, who knows, it'll be bluish, that's for sure. Uh, but run tests. Always, 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 always run tests. Okay, once I've um, put this uh, and the capacitor in, I'm going to sit down, stop for five minutes and answer a bunch of questions. So, uh, yeah, if you have, uh, yeah, if you have questions, let me know.
Now, <laughs> part of him cringes every time you use the iron to carry solder to the joint, but it's the easiest way to do it without having three hands. Fair point. Uh, FFS 987 says you should heat the joint, then add solder to it instead of adding solder to the iron and placing that on the joint. Most or all of the flux will have burnt off by the by the way the way that I'm doing it now. That's interesting. Okay, hold on. I've got one more thing to do. So. So I'm tinning the, sol the soldering iron, putting a little bit of solder on it, and I then, and I tin the part, hold on, I need to, uh, actually let's, let's cut this to size first so we can do this properly, hold on. So I've got solder on the soldering iron, uh, at this point probably sans flux. I've got solder on the legs of my capacitor. I generally do that, then clean the soldering iron, then retin. And then heat that yeah that's generally how I do it now because I'm thinking about that so uh, yeah I'm not sure I'm being quite as naughty as uh, as it sounds at first uh, at first thing. Now, however, I need to take that entire part out because uh, the leg of that capacitor was far far too long. Hold on. A super chat here from. Uh, uh, from Chester Jaswinski says, Ben, my dude, looks great, man. Uh, love from the New Yankee Boys. Hey, man, how you doing? Um, New Yankee Gunman. Uh, yeah. Gun restoration, etc. Check them out on uh, your available social media platform of choice. Okay, so that, that has actually held down. I do want to add a little bit more. There we go, that's better. This is a very not great soldering operation but it does not great looking but it definitely definitely does the job definitely hopefully maybe possibly okay I'm going to answer a few questions and then we'll test it and see if it works. How's that? Um, and to tent flate, I'm going to turn the soldering iron off. 
All right. Uh, Simon Duffy says, Ash is a neckwood. Any good? Also, I've seen you use sycamore before. I have a few kiln dried slabs of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I use sycamore all the time. Sycamore is great. Uh, you are going to be happy. Uh, use a, uh, just double check that the, the uh, that it is dry enough. Ash as a neck wood, I th I tend to avoid open grained timbers where I can for neck woods, and that's particularly open grained. I do think it would be strong enough, but not too sure. Dave Dave says, do orange drop caps contain vitamin C? Uh, they contain some sort of magic. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Chevet Lien says the solder I use often bubbles and spits flux out to protect the guitar from hot slag. Yes, uh, mine doesn't have that issue very often. Uh, although it appears I've got a little bit of shielding paint on the body there. Uh, there we go, sorted. But uh, yeah, in general, it's good practice to protect the body and I should do that. <sighs> Dave Lewis says I've built three Built a three-string cigar box guitar and a cigar box ukulele, both for kits. That's cool. Um, I would like to do that, actually. I'd like to do more of that sort of thing. And FFS976, thank you for the tip. I will... Uh, uh, I'm going to go and watch some videos on how to properly solder. Ian Bonjour says, Ben, thanks for the advice on the walnut gunstock the other day. It turned out great. Just put a coat of Renaissance wax to finish it off. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> no worries, Chester. It's all good. Okay, Fukumi's off. Got dad responsibilities to attend to. Good luck with the wiring, Ben. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, yeah, the fact that smoke is still coming from the iron tip means the flux hasn't all burned away. Uh, good point. It's, I'm, yeah, I do, I do tend to add, I'm tinning both parts, then adding a little bit of more, a little bit more solder, but I, I, I do think that um, FFS had a very valid, had a valid point. This is, that is the correct way to do it. Okay. Now, hold on, I need to figure this out because uh, I actually went and uh, purchased a, uh, just a little, a tiny little practice amp. Uh, no, you won't be able to see that there, I suppose, for the purposes of this being a video. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I went and got a, a little uh, practice bass amp. Uh, wow, it's actually plugged in. Okay. I've never, never turned it on. So let's put that in the middle. High, mid, low, mid, low, high. Funny. Okay, and volume. Um, this is not likely to sound great. Uh, now, my jack socket currently isn't plugged in, so I'm just going to gently clamp the, uh, the lead in there. So I'm not putting pressure on the, on the strings. said strings, I meant wires coming out of the damn guitar. Both volumes up, tone up. Cheap amp on.
Okay, hold on. So that should be bridge pickup off, neck on, neither off, bridge, and a tone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we have a functioning instrument. Now, who do I need to shout at? Hold on, who was that? Uh, da -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Stephen Bradley, hot slag, I stop it, I, <laughs> and he just got that. Uh, Ross Goodley said, silence or bzzz. Ross, your lack of faith disturbs me. <laughs> All right. Um That's cool, that's cool. I'm happy with that. So now uh, turn this off and install the jack where it's supposed to be. Damn it, I didn't get the close up of me fiddling about. So sorry, this is for the video. Uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, <clears throat> so now with that done, I need to sort out the back plate, put control knobs on, I need to install the jack plate properly, and uh, then we'll have a little bit of a play, and then we'll move on to something else. If I'm going to build bases more often, I think I'm going to have to uh, uh, invest in a nice base amp. And I do think, yeah, there should be there should be space for that. There should be space for that. Now, I know what I need to do. Drill a few holes. Okay. Now the inside of my jack cavity there is not is not shielded. That's often where you end up with uh, issues.
talking about the soldering. Paul Cook says there's probably a Skillshare course if you're one of the first 1,000 to watch your own vid. Uh, that's hilarious. I um, so seriously, um, seriously, this screw that I just put in is shite. Uh, also, I could probably drill a slightly bigger hole. Um, Skillshare. As a as a creator, I get a three month rolling free coupon from them so that I can do it. But uh, having to go and say, hey, I'm still working with you guys. Um, can you renew my coupon or whatever is just such. Uh, it's just very annoying. Um, I, I actually did use <laughs> I actually did use the link in my description and I just went and, and bought a membership because I really am a fan of Skillshare. I absolutely love uh, learning and I am on there all the time. Uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm a, yeah, I'm a, a customer as well as a, an influencer for what that's worth. But anyway. Let me just see what's happening here. Perfect. Uh, Tim, you should have an answer from Ricky and the team um, uh, in about six emails time, they said, and that was actually a while ago, so soon, I would suggest. Now, I'm just making sure that uh, everything's gonna fit in here. Uh, my capacitor was standing up a little bit proud, I think. Uh, and you don't want to short anything out when you put the, uh, uh, when you put the control cover on. So yeah, it's just, I've moved that over to the side, but I had to move that lug so that it wouldn't short off on that. But we should be good. And, um, I'm not going to push that all the way down just yet. I need to have a hole drilled first. That'll do. Dave Lewis, uh, Dave Lewis says, if you want to, if you want to laugh, go watch Trogley's selling his V video. Uh, the camera hat he bought off Amazon uh, is hilarious. Uh, Daniel Woten says, can't Kemper do bass? Very good point. Um, I hadn't even considered that. I don't know. I assume so. The base call be, needs to be called Dave Sustain. I like it. Uh, lap base, pedal base ideas from Deja Voodoo. Cool. Forest Pfeiffer says, of course we never doubted you. I bloody doubted me. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, now if I had pushed that down, I would have ended up struggling to get this very well fitted back plate uh, off the instrument. I've just realized the back of it hasn't been painted yet because I'm a fool. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to just drill and get that done.
sacrificial workbench. That's character. Let me drop the screw. Okay. The countersink on a little handle is actually a really useful little tool. Bourbon Sherbet saying, what? No magnets? <laughs> no. No, I'm not in the mood for magnets at the moment. Uh, okay, so here we go. Now, if that's too tight, I can, uh, I can pull it up with a, uh, just a standard wood screw. We'll go into one of the holes, twist it a little bit, and then it doesn't work. There we go. Okay, just finessing a little bit. Mark Jennings, three months? Feels like longer. What do you mean three months? Uh, or are you late? Are you watching an earlier bit? Is that how long I've been building this base?
Mark Base CMD 12121P Mini Combo. Small, loud enough to annoy your neighbours. Sounds great. And not too sizable as a test demo amp in the workshop. Okay. Uh, I know uh, I know the guys over at Mark Base. They're quite cool. I've always been partial, partial to an, uh, an orange base cab though as well. So while I was making that uh, pletrum yesterday, I gummed up with uh, rosewood rosin, I suppose, uh, the sandpaper on this. And uh, that's my course, but the sandpaper is not currently working. So I'm just going to an Iwasaki, yuck, an Iwasaki rasp that when going with the grain like this and being used gently, is leaves a very very fine finish. Three. Oh no, three's pointing the wrong way. Two's pointing the wrong way. Nobody's pointing the right way. Damn. All right, hold on. That's pretty close. All right, ask me questions. Base is a rod, their players accept different shapes more readily, but they won't justify paying as much for one as they would for a guitar. That's from Bob and Sherbert. Is that true? I, I don't spend very much time looking at the base market. I must say. Yeah. 
that will do nicely. Uh, now I need to take it out again and uh, <laughs> and shield it. Paul Need says, I think master built instruments shouldn't be absolutely symmetrical. There should always be a little fault or two to show it's hand built. A saying states only Allah is perfect. Um, I, knowing. Hmm. I think that nothing handmade. will ever be absolutely perfect, uh, can ever be absolutely perfect. And I do think that it is our imperfections that make us beautiful uh, in general, and certainly with regards to what we make and create. Um, that being said, I also believe that one should strive for perfection wherever possible. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one. Alan Wood says it's predicted to 33 degrees or 91.4 Fahrenheit in London. Uh, getting up there now, that's, that's insane. That's very, very hot for the UK. Very hot indeed. Crimson shielding paint. Paint from the centre to the outside. This has just been watered down a little bit, as uh, uh, I'm sure you can see. So it's a little bit more liquid than, uh, than our shielding paint generally is. Now I'm making sure to go right up to the edges so that um, it will be contacting with uh, the rest of the shielding paint on the inside of the cavity and thus creating a perfect Faraday cage, uh, keeping the uh, dreaded hum out as much as possible. There we go. Airfire says, my partner was in London yesterday painting walls for their summer show and in an unventilated room with no windows, it was 32 degrees. Um, the most I've ever experienced is 40 or there are uh, 42, I think. Uh, and that was at uh, Lake Kariba in uh, Zimbabwe and that was dreadful um, but it's a different kind as you all know I'm about to say it's a different kind of heat uh, depending on humidities etc okay so the shielding paint is going to dry very very quickly we're not gonna be waiting too long for that but let's see if there's any questions here uh, Bob and Sherbert says, California says that stuff will give you cancer. California says that uh, breathing will give you, well, <laughs> depends on where you are, I suppose it does. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Woten says, do you mean that we all voted for that inclusion on the back plate and you used it on the inside? I did it in that episode by mistake, utterly, I drew it on the wrong side of the back plate because the template was inverted because I'm a fool. I don't even know why you are currently watching me. I am that foolish. 
I appreciate your support, but um, I have to question, um, you know, uh, I don't know. Everything. Question everything. Trust no one. Whistleblower on the emails responded to my offer. I have no idea. So, uh, uh, yeah, at Crimson Guitars, uh, the Vintage Tool Shop has, for the last two or three years, been run by uh, by Safi, and sadly, she's moved on. Uh, we kind of thought she would when we moved uh, from the shop to Crimson. Uh, it's essentially turned her 10 minute commute into an hour each way um, due to kids and schools and stuff. So sadly, she's she's moved on, which means now I'm having to play a much more active role in the day to day management of the tool shop for now and in the purchasing and buying and looking at tools and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot. Uh, Dimitri says, Ben, if you would use active pickups, would you still have to use shielding paint? I honestly don't know if you have to. Uh, active pickups tend to be low noise pickups. I do think that the wires still run the risk of picking up um, 60 cycle hum, etc., and sending it through. So just thinking about it here, yes. Now, every time I've ever done it, I have, every time I've ever used active pickups, I have used shielding paint um, or, or foil or something like that. Uh, we haven't had, yeah. So it's it's one of those things, but yeah. Airfire says, okay, I have a question, if I may, although I have a feeling you may not be able to help, uh, know of any good gold nitro finishes that are available in the UK? It's hankering for my next project. Okay, so um, use any nitro lacquer you want. It's the substrate that just has to be compatible with nitro. And most sprays will go underneath, so most paints will go underneath a nitro varnish. Uh, so I was uh, at the local. Uh, I was at a local hardware store the other day buying paint for something else entirely. Um, that heat paint that you put in. You don't need to know. The there is there are a couple of very impressive looking ranges of metallic spray paints in rattle cans now that look incredible. And I would suggest you play with one of those and then just buy a, a can of uh, rattle can nitro uh, to go over that and you'll be fine. There we go. Helped you. <laughs> uh, Goaty the Roadie says, no, EMG doesn't need a ground wire, so I'd say you don't need to shield anything. Um, fair enough. I still question that. Stephen Koss is in pain and the hospital are taking him away. Good luck, man. Uh, do -do -do -do. Okay. Everybody, if you have questions, uh, Deja Voodoo says a handmade neck will always stand apart as a unique creation, even if there is a relative you uniformity throughout the rest of the build. I do agree uh, to a certain extent. <laughs> the Fenrisian sweatshop says you're telling me it's hot. The airbrush is not liking things today. Yeah, when it starts messing with uh, with materials and how things react, that's a different story. I must say, however, that I'm really happy because uh, as you can probably see here, that's almost entirely dried. <laughs> in just the few minutes that we've been talking. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Rick Michaela says, I just recently found your videos and I must say that I rather enjoy them. Thank you very much. Um, I wish I wasn't losing the use of my right hand as I would have loved to build my own guitar. You're very inspiring, Ben. Um, 
I have a friend, thank you very much. I have a friend who I studied um, uh, the building of uh, early stringed musical instruments, viola de gambas predominantly, uh, and, you know, acoustic instruments. I studied building with him, and he, as a child, had brain surgery that went wrong, and he lost uh, use of his left arm. Uh, and he ended up with an arm that was just sitting here. He could sort of use his shoulder and, and use it to hold things sometimes, but he is an instrument maker. And uh, it's entirely possible to overcome uh, these things. Uh, clamps, advices, and work holding obviously is the major, major problem, but uh, it's entirely possible to uh, uh, to work around and uh, yeah I'm sorry that's happened to you but uh, uh, yeah don't let it get you down now Dropping things everywhere. Of course I am. Was this, this was supposed to be a one day build, wasn't it? Running around, looking through drawers. And not finding what he's looking for. Strange one. Oh, fair enough. Okay, this is cured. Let's have a look. We're talking about sound. No, Paul Cook, we cannot. <laughs> Bob Madrubert says, how far from the edges should you cut the string channels on your nut? I'm assuming for a guitar, because you say high E and low E strings. Um, I generally go about three and a half millimeters on the bass side and about three millimeters on the treble. Uh, but what's half a millimeter between friends? 
Chicks Guitars here on YouTube has a video on building a guitar with only one hand. Of course he does. Um, that was incredible. Okay. <laughs> Come on, man. So that's all good. Of course, I haven't actually drilled that yet. This is the never ending guitar build, I tell you. Why are we talking about sound? Vibrations that travel through the air or other medium. And whenever you do that, run it back through the amp because this is where you will discover an issue, if there is one. Shane Doherty says, Ben, is there a concern of the backplate splitting from expansion because it is such a tight fit? Uh, no. Uh, if... Essentially, it's very, 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 very well dried ebony. Uh, if the guitar was put into a very, very, very damp um, environment for a long time, then there's actually a chance that the ebony would break the body if the ebony took on the moisture but at the same time the body would be taking on moisture and also expanding so um, no I don't think so uh, if the body was wet wood and that um, and the body lost moisture and then shrunk, then the body would also split against the ebony because the ebony is, is so, so solid. Uh, so uh, yeah, there you go. It's a difficult to... It's a difficult thing. Right. <sighs> Control knobs. And then we're done. Now, I thought I had some gold control knobs floating around, uh, and I do, but they appear to have gone missing, and I'm not going to 
rummage for now. I've got these very, very, very cool PRS style uh, crystal clear, crystal clear knobs, speed knobs that, oh, those two have abalone, hold on. Ooh. <laughs> what do we do, people? I think that's it. I don't think I've got another clear one. I do not. Avalon it is. Okay, so we've got that as an option or or some little black top hat knobs. So what I want to do is just double So we're gonna have a we're gonna have a quick vote. Uh, that wasn't even focused in the right place. Damn it! We're gonna vote. The little black ones, or clear and with a, a little bit of abalone bling in the centre. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to put together a quick poll. Yeah. Everybody's saying black. <laughs> well, we'll see. Mark Jennings is uh, is teasing us by saying banana. <laughs> I haven't used plastic control knobs on a guitar for a very, very, very long time. Okay. Um, this is an overwhelming 71% uh, saying for black at the moment. So I'm going to give it one more minute and we'll see what else you say. Um, Nobody actually told me about why we were talking about sound and physics, etc. Uh, black, 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 black. Um, Bob Buskings is not a fan of either one. So again, with when the instrument is uh, one, we can change them over to gold. I thought I was thinking about gold metal knobs, but uh, I've only got two of those there. I had three over here, and they've gone missing. So. Who knows? Mm. 
All right, and Lisa says, no chinsing out on my base, black bling. Okay, cool. End the poll then. 30% said clear. 70% said black. Ooh, chicken heads would be cool. Chicken heads would be cool. Uh, again, I'm coming to the conclusion that I need to have a, a slightly larger selection of hardware here and a better way of control of keeping tabs on what I've actually got. So this is on me again. But uh, let's just install these. So turn the volume all the way up. My 10 is facing that. Oops. Of course I dropped it. I do believe we've just finished a base. The only thing that I haven't put on this instrument yet is a serial number. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to start doing that more often. I do agree, black was the right choice. I've wanted to use those clear knobs on something for the longest time. And I thought this was my opportunity, but uh, no. Hold on. Where are we? Two hours, 15 minutes into this stream and this instrument is done. even less of a bass player than I am a guitarist. So this is neck volume, sorry, neck all the way up. And I'm using a cheap practice amp just, um, hold on, there we go. All right, uh, room mic, cheap practice amp, zeroed out, bang in the middle of uh, all the equalizers. <laughs> is 
pretty close. I haven't intonated it. I haven't fully set it up, although I'm really happy with how that is going. I could lower the action on the nut, and I will do, but I want to let this settle for a little while. <laughs> says is it too late to add frets whoever wins this this is being raffled off and whoever wins this i will happily change the control knobs i will happily add frets if that is uh if that is wanted and that too will end up being a video on the channel if that does happen because you know it would be interesting it's never too late to add frets to a fretless instrument in my opinion i should have had my microphone for that okay uh, somebody just asked me to step back a little bit so you can see the whole body. <laughs> or not. Uh, no, it's not flat wounds. This is currently round wounds. Uh, flat wounds are a distinct personal choice. I prefer the sound of uh, round wounds even on a uh, on a fretless instrument. But uh, yeah, again, I don't know who this is for, so I've just made a few choices myself. <laughs> No trash rod cover, that's Stephen Hay. No, this is a Fender style thing. It's got a brass tube in it, accenting where the trash rod is, and that's it. Slap, I have never been able to consistent to actually slap. I haven't got a clue how to do it. And then... <laughs> Daniel Quill said, is it bad uh, form to enter the raffle and win it yourself? I, I am so tempted, but I think it's bad form. Uh, nobody, in spite of the fact that the raffle is entirely uh, out of my control, it's a third party company, um, it would be, yeah, not allowed. Fancy a fretless guitar though, I really do. Uh, no, Binzi 1976, the raffle is not live yet. The raffle is going to go live as soon as the series of videos following this bass being built goes live on the main channel. Uh, at Crimson Guitars on the main Crimson Cuts of Guitars YouTube channel, which is going to be sometime in the next uh, three or four weeks. I do need to. I do need to get on with the hand tool build. So essentially, I need to finish the hand tool build, and then this series will go live, and 
yeah, so it's going to be a little bit of wait before the raffle, I think. An alternative is that this will be the Wednesday videos and the hand tool build will be Saturdays, but I, I, I don't particularly want to do it that way around. Uh, Forest Five he says, I need to turn down a bit of ebony, make knobs. Just spit it out to another day. Um, maybe. Bulgonian evolution, how the hell are ya? Yeah, you could really annoy the locals with how loud you can get with that, uh, this thing. It could be fun. Um, anyway, look, uh, this is it. Seriously, I'm going to quickly film the outro for the video, that, for the edit and all of that jazz. Please, I'm not telling you guys to go away. And then we can move on with the rest of our day, which is going to be a few hours of, I don't know, playing around with a Hofner, I suppose. Let's do that then. Alright, thank you very, very much for watching. Please do not forget that this instrument could be yours. Check out the raffle link in the description below. It has been going live for a while now, and uh, but the odds are still good. The odds still may well be in your favour. I can't believe I said that. Uh, now, two weeks from today, two weeks from today, the raffle will come to an end. And, uh, yeah, as I said, I'll add frets if you want frets, if you win it. I will change the control knobs if you want, if you win it. And uh, other than that, well, this has been my first base build on the channel for a while. And I think only the second actually on the channel since I started it, however many years ago. Guaranteed I'm going to do more. I love it. I've had a blast. And... Uh, there are more bases on the, on the horizon. Now let me know, what should I do? What should I make? Click like, please subscribe. Hit the notification button and all that stuff. And uh, cease zoning out when I say things like that. Come on, people. Uh, see you soon. Goodbye. Alrighty. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, and I am serious. I do want to build another one. Now, Shane Doherty is asking me, uh, says, have you decided what the next build will be? I would love the pedal board build. Uh, yes, no, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Sounded nice acoustic there. Alrighty, uh, turn this off. We've built a base. She's done. Ah, there's stuff up there. Instrument's fine. Don't tell whoever wins the raffle. Lisa, uh, I did nothing. <sighs> Forest Fife is saying you need to build a case for it now. I have some very, very, very good soft cases, uh, but uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna travel in a hard case for sure. So that's a good point. I need to sort that out. I can't believe I've done it. Yeah. Somewhat of an anticlimax, given that uh, it was supposed to be finished the other day. But uh, yeah, two and a half hours of messing around, and uh, and we are done. Uh, when will you start your GGBO project? That is from uh, Gustav Holmström. Uh, Within a couple of weeks, actually, I think. I think that's the plan. 
Yes, so I'm going to be live streaming my... Okay, for now, short term, I am going to have the live stream... I don't know. I made a decision and immediately questioned myself, so that's not going to happen. Twelve string multi scale electric ukulele banjo. Uh, yeah, banjo ladies are a thing. So that would be a six course banjo, which is a weird thing, but yeah, it could be fun. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to do. Okay. Ross Goodley says, What happened to the guitar from a fence post build? That is coming back and that's that is the thing so that instrument is uh going to be built next it's finishing I'm, i've got i've got to finish it i have to finish it i want to finish it i also need to find somewhere to hang this one so please excuse me for a second wow My world is very messy right now. Very messy indeed. But that is safe. And I need to get myself into a completely different mode, uh, which is strange. Okay, do you guys have any questions? Uh, Tim says, Will took care of me, Ben. Thanks. Uh, just added to my order. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So uh, we've, we're currently training a new batch of, uh, of people up. And uh, yeah, it's taking time. Lisa Harshberg has come in with a, a $10 super chat. Um, Lisa says, truly beautiful and sounds amazing. Whoever wins this will be blessed beyond measure. Not giving up on my dream. Just know how many people will love this bass. Ukulele next. Uh, Lisa desperately wants to win this instrument, and uh, we will. Uh, um, there was even talk about. Well, yeah. Good luck, Lisa. Uh, ukulele. I do think that I have to do a ukulele build at some point. Uh, now, from a from a project point of view, I've got a watch inspired build that I want to do uh, shortly. That's going to be my next major build after the hand tool only. And that has been the plan. I honestly thought I would start that in January, like really. Uh, but this year has gone somewhat off piste. Uh, the live streams messed things up and I didn't want to do the watch build on the live stream because I wanted to be absolute precise and careful, etc. I'm wondering <sighs> yeah there's many decisions to be made I'm actually honestly wondering whether I should do uh, a couple of live streams a week and only have one project on the go at any one time uh, that would certainly make life a little bit less uh, confused <laughs> But, uh, but I don't know. At the, at this stage, I've got to finish the hand tool build. I've got to uh, start my GGBO, which is going to be live streamed, and then after that, you know, all bets are off. We will see. I'm still enjoying making videos. I think I always will, and uh, yeah, it's not going to stop coming. But I also do want to do other things like taking, for example, this Hofner apart and doing bits and pieces with that. Uh, I've got a custom 24 uh, PRS up at the, at the house that needs to be done. I've got a couple of instruments that need relicking, um, a couple of Les Pauls and, and bits and pieces like that. So yeah, there's going to be a, a lot of content on the channel. And that sort of means one build at a time, actually. Yeah. We'll see. Alrighty. Uh, Robert R says, when will we be seeing you working in the new workshop at Crimson properly? Uh, not too far away, I think. Uh, seriously. Um, yeah, uh, basically, 
there's going to be smaller things there. Uh, at the moment, when I'm working at Crimson, I'm actually putting in time on tool making and uh, improvements in the system in how we make things, changing designs and things. And my main task is also uh, project uh, product development. So I'm figuring out new tools or or older tools that we haven't yet offered yet that we need to add. So I'm doing a lot of stuff that isn't actually filming, um, which is very, very necessary, but obviously it doesn't result in you guys getting a video. Uh, VTR added says, planning a batch of marking knives, any feedback? Um, I very much like the marking knife. Uh, the, uh, I would flatten the, I would flatten the back a little bit more. I think that's the only thing that I've noticed. Um, I'm going to go back and uh, I need to flatten that. Uh, it's it's all well and good having a, a nice shiny bevel on one side, but uh, that needs to be on both. Other than that, it's comfortable, it's attractive. Um, you know, it absolutely works. I am not a fan of marking knives per se. I don't use them very much uh, myself, but having this is making me want to. So uh, yeah, there we go. Um, any thoughts on what you will build for the GGBO? That's for the central scrutinizer. I don't really know. Um, okay, tell you what. So look, we, this, this has taken a lot longer than I thought. Here's a question that says, uh, hey Ben, uh, what is the surprise? Anthony Cunliffe says, so what's the surprise prototype going to be? Uh, Instead of st starting the Hofner teardown now, do we? Well, let's have a look at the quick prototype. It's, it's, yeah, there's things that will change, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, hey, Ben, ever thinking about doing a fender style skunk stripe neck? That's from Gabor. Um, Speeds Duck, whose name I will app of mauled. I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing. Crikey. Yes. So we we don't currently offer it, but it's something that we are working on offering on the kit guitars. And uh, if somebody does want a traditional single truss rod, skunk striped neck, we can make that. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm looking into vintage instruments and the differences and what makes sounds different and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's one of those things. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this prototype instrument out and you guys can have a look at this. This is, this is just for the live stream. It's not, uh, it's not finished or it's, it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, the headstock was, is not, we're not using this headstock emphatically not. And I do want to change the body shape to a certain extent, uh, but keep this general aesthetic. The scratch plate, we made it out of aluminum and then used a, a metal, uh, blackening compound. And that has, uh, reacted over the last three or four months and uh, hasn't worked very well. So uh, the way the scratch plate was made is fine, but the it, it needs to have a different finish on it. Uh, now, I actually need to, uh, part of the wiring has uh, come apart. So we're gonna pull the soldering iron out again and have a look at that and see what see what's happened. But, But this should be fun. And I genuinely want to know what you guys think. Is this your sort of thing?
So we're very vintage inspired. Ash body, ebony fretboard, block inlays with a hollow block at the 12th fret. Uh, I, we have used a, sp a spoke nut truss rod on this one and uh, I'm not going to keep that and uh, there's also going to be a more crimson-y uh, back plate thing. Rosewood, rosewood neck and all in all a pretty cool looking heavily vintage inspired offset offset instrument. A Jazz Tilly Jr. <laughs> okay, so Simon Bayless has come out with my favorite comment so far, who says, uh, uh, just one question, Ben, where can I get one? Uh, drop us an email. So let me just, let me just put this away. I've got so many guitar cases floating around right now. So here we are. Uh, we're going for a different headstock. I wasn't sure about having a three aside or sticking with a more Fendery vibe. And we were playing with smaller headstocks and weight saving and all that jazz. I, I didn't like that. Uh, currently has locking tuners on it because required with this kind of a bridge really. Uh, rosewood neck, flat headstock. Uh, I want to do, if we're going to do six in line, it'll be somewhat closer to the standard crimson descendant headstock. I don't think I have any. The neck's floating around, but uh, there's nothing here. Uh, but yeah, the offset body, the scratch plate. I haven't done a scratch plate build a scratch plate design forever. Um, as a company, we just haven't done this. And uh, I haven't also played with, we're thinking more and more vintage inspired. It, it's the market wants it. It's a guitars that I've always loved. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, this sort of thing also works very, very well with a dog hair uh, kind of finish. Uh, the real, the real fun stuff is going to be, um, the real fun stuff is going to be nitro finish as well. Uh, we will be doing nitro, we'll be aging, uh, doing checking and cracking. Uh, I'm uncertain, but I kind of want it to be bolt on as well. Uh, for the longest time we've glued necks in just because uh, I always thought that it was better. Um, I always thought that a glued-in neck was better, and in reality, it's not better, it's just slightly different. So, uh, there we go. Uh, Joe Brown says, is it for sale? Not this one, but if you are seriously interested, then we will be producing... We will be producing something very, very similar to this. A few upgrades and, and, and minor changes, basically. Oh, not in tune. Uh, that's been in a case for a little while. Uh, where's my tuner? Okay, let's have a quick look. Uh, that Jazzmaster has Gibson in its woodpile. Uh, uh, Jamie Krakramer loves the scratch plate. Uh, Robert R says, I would like a more transparent color, maybe black stain and sanded back first, then white stain. So yeah, that's the dog breath kind of finish. Uh, dog hair, sorry. And we can absolutely do that. Modern vintage. Lisa loves the shape. <coughs> uh, Paul Ferriby says, could you stretch the scratch plate? Exactly. Uh, the scratch plate coming up more and incorporating the switch or potentially, uh, or potentially moving, uh, keeping the scratch plate basically what it is and moving a switch down here. I'm, I'm, I'm uncertain on that front uh, myself. Uh, the sort of black and white look is very cool. That's uh, what we get from uh, 
I've the comments have moved. I've I've lost it now. I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> needs a beefy headstock. I absolutely agree. Uh, the neck is a P90, and the crimson pastel colours would work very, very, very well. Lisa Harshberger says, "Anyone extremely rich and single want to marry me so I can buy one?" <laughs> Uh, Tim Siegel is asking if it's a mastery bridge. Uh, not on this one. Not on this one, but that is a thing. Paul Cook is taking the piss. Model name, Orfset. Um, cool. The big unit says, on break here, do you guys have any plans to develop a white stain again? Uh, send us an email. We can, we can get it for you. It's just uh, the white stain settles. It's, there are better better ways of doing of doing that yeah so whoever was playing at last is obviously down tuned the whole thing Everybody's taken it home. It's uh, it's been doing the rounds. SM Meyer says anodized aluminium for the scratch plate. I think that is the plan. Yeah. Um, or, sorry, that was that was that was one plan. My other is to get instead of to make it out of aluminium, which is easy. Uh, on my laser cutter, I can cut up to two millimeter thick stainless steel, and I think that a sort of one one and a half millimeter thick stainless steel scratch plate laser ablated moonscapes for example just out of interest uh, so that sort of thing would work very well it i mean this one is obviously a black and white uh, looking monochrome kind of guitar but uh, long term you could do all sorts of things uh, and have um well you name it uh, a copper i think a black guitar with a uh, a patinated copper scratch plate would be incredible. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alex wants it. Alex says, uh, I'd say you pretty much nailed the design because I want it. I did not design this entirely. Uh, logo, we weren't sure. So the logo is going to be uh, I'm just the Crimson Swoop. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Stainless Steel would be cool. The moon on Stainless Steel. Uh, Whisper Pink Body from Stephen Bradley. Jive's Blue says, frankly, I love the rosewood neck, I agree, and the cream finish on the body is beautiful contrast. I do agree that the head is not very elegant for this guitar, I absolutely agree. Um, is this going to be the new model for random guitars? That's from Leon. Leon, uh, too many people hated the name random guitars, so uh, I, changed, uh, I changed that rapidly. Uh, where's my screwdriver? There we go. Uh, now, there's an issue with the wiring, and I'm not entirely sure what's gone wrong. So... Uh, Yeah, let's just uh, let's just take this off and see. It's entirely possible, actually, that it's in the uh, switch. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> Ifax says, Ben, has Dave told you he's not giving back the epoxy resin gold leaf yet? Uh, not giving it back yet or not giving it back? I suspect not giving it back. So this is a, this is that rare thing, a beautiful, beautiful bit of wiring. So this is what happens when people are building guitars off live stream. <coughs> okay, so the uh, essentially my <laughs> uh, no pull uh, at this spec at least it's not in the twelve hundred quid price range. We're talking about um, uh, somewhere around about three thousand, I would say. Uh, potentially, potentially more. <laughs> Jamie Krakomer says, you can tell that that wiring wasn't done on a one day build. Absolutely spot on you can. <coughs> Please excuse me. All right, switch mic friends. No, I can't actually. It's all so beautiful. All I can think is that the uh, switch might be uh, grounding out on the shielding painting here. But uh, it's a black pit. I don't like Les Paul style switches. Um, because it's just hard to see what's going on. Tim Ziegler says that's a $4,000 guitar. I, I agree. Well, this is the thing that Crimson is capable of doing day in, day out. It's, it's just, uh, it's what we, it's what we do. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, oh, there's a lot going on. Uh, <sighs> Okay, sorry, distracted. The issue is uh, people don't like buying a $4,000 guitar from somebody who also makes kit guitars, etc. And I thought, oh, let's rebrand the kits. <laughs> Morganian Evolution, you're meanie. Uh, actually, what I'm doing is rebranding the kits and somewhat slightly rebranding the guitars. And it's going to be Crimson Custom Guitars or Crimson Custom Shop or something like that, using the Crimson Swoop logo, but without the word Crimson in it. And we'll see, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, that's the, uh, that's the plan. Okay, I was hoping, I was hoping that when I opened this up, I would find an obvious reason why it's not working properly. And I just, can't this it all looks absolutely impeccable and perfect so so yeah I don't know why this wiring isn't working properly
I do know why this wiring isn't working properly. It's because it's not working improperly. It's working perfectly fine. So the issue was, can you believe it? On the three-way toggle, uh, let me just try and find one. Oh, I can't even find three. Fine. Uh, when it was soldered together, the the wire, your three-way toggle, you got the two uh, two things in the center to which you uh, wire your out, and then you got a pickup going to one side and a pickup going to the other side. The pickup wire on the one side had been soldered through the eye hole of the piece, and that had been moved ever so slightly, and the end of the wire was grounding out on the outside of the of the switch and that's what the problem was so well there we go um what can i say fixed Goody already says it's got everything I don't like about a guitar, which means I like it even more. There are, there are, okay, please bear in mind, this is literally just the first stage, uh, second stage uh, of the instrument. Sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, Chip, thank you. <coughs> Everybody's shouting me about the mic. This is the very first stage of an instrument um, and we don't normally show prototypes uh, off to people um, but uh, anyway here it is there it's what with it's what we're currently thinking uh, now the back plates are currently rosewood to match the neck I will probably have those matching the scratch plate instead and we while i like the shape i'm gonna i'm gonna be changing that to a certain extent i want more access on the neck pocket um so this here is fairly chunky um, i don't like how that shape there is a, a different angle to the to the curve on the back so i'm gonna do something do something with that uh, a little bit but uh, yeah there's a there is most certainly a lot to like about it. Now, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about three aside headstock on this, or or is a six in line more in keeping? Yes, Wolford, I turned the uh, soldering iron off. That was my. Uh, Yeah, that was my, uh, I'm sure I'm right, this guitar, this, this bass is going to play properly uh, thing. Let me put the strap on backwards. What can I do? Rob Ashby says uh, plus one for four plus two. Uh, I'm not allowed to do that, but it would look great.
Okay, so these pickups are probably not, these are just standard, uh, relatively inexpensive pickups. Uh, we would be going uh, full custom wound. <laughs> properly intonated. That's funny. <laughs> Daniel Marquez says, why are you not allowed to do a 4x2? I'm fairly sure any ball have got that patented or trademarked. So that's a bridge. Neck. Sorry. It's very loud, isn't it? play more um, pickup building course uh, that is something that we are absolutely planning on doing if you're interested in booking on one um, drop an email through to office at crimsonguitars.com and say please put my name down to give us a shout we're just figuring out dates at the moment uh, now it's going to be fairly chunky uh, from a time point of view but if you want to do wiring and add that on as an addendum, yes, we can do that. Uh, Paul Need says, Ben, could you please remind me of where the first lines are drawn when doing a facet neck carve? <coughs> um, it's basically midway between your center line and the edge of the neck, and then halfway down, but it depends on what curve you want. The best bet is to draw the curve you want um, in cross section, draw a rectangle around that, and then you can work out the best way to facet it from there you can it doesn't have to be a perfect a C shape or whatever this is the tone uh, plectrum I, I made the other day And 
obviously there's a coil split on the uh, on the bridge. So there we go. Anyway, look, I'm. This wasn't uh, what I was supposed to be doing today, uh, and we're pretty much at the end, <laughs> running out of time. In any case, um, yeah. Look, I'm really glad you guys are into this sort of thing. I really, 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 really uh, want to do more. We're really working on a vintage-inspired range of guitars at Crimson, and uh, this was one of the prototypes that we've put together. Uh, it's certainly one of the better looking ones. Uh, hidden fret ends as well. <sighs> the whole thing's, um, yeah, pretty fun. And no, we haven't got a name for the guitar yet at all. Uh, but I will share the next prototype with you uh, when that comes through. And uh, uh, yeah, see if you guys feel the same way. can't resist it. Okay, now, uh, how about a guitar painting or finishing course? Uh, might be challenging to set up as a standalone course, but could work as an add-on to other courses. Uh, so the issue, yes, uh, absolutely possible. The issue is one of timing. Generally, if you spray on the Friday and then come back on the Monday, you should actually be, or maybe the Tuesday, you should be good to go for the sorts of finishes that we tend to use. But if you want to use nitro, that's not going to really happen. That isn't, uh, sadly. But uh, yeah, give us a shout uh, if you are interested in that sort of thing and uh, we could maybe work it in. Uh, call it a jazz caster. Uh, it's a bit close to the bone, but fair enough. Um, John Hutton likes the, the prototype. A gold foil style pickup cover for this absolutely would be great. Um, and there we go. Bolt-on is going to allow you to do a shim for brake angle if necessary. Bolt-on just adds a little bit more flexibility and does fit with this style um, of build as well. And it means that we'd also be able to make it a little bit um, more inexpensively, basically. Uh, there could there could be a set neck version if people wanted it, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just one of those things. Um, yeah, a bunch of people saying three aside. I, I do think the three aside would look better with this one. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, look, we've we've run out, um, so people are, are drifting away because this is now not talking about guitar building and it's too late in the day really for me to start uh, getting into a new project. Uh, <coughs> let me uh, let me put this away. I'll show you the Hofner, um, did I call it a Marauder? I think that's what the, the model is called. And uh, Yeah. <laughs> Unpredictable. That's that's the issue with with me and with everything I do. You never really know. What am I dropping? All sorts of stuff. All right, so this is a uh, pearlescent Hofner uh, bound neck. I do think the inlays are supremely cool. This does feel like a completely different level of instrument, but it's cool and it's of its time. And they're actually relatively, uh, relatively rare. 
Uh, I love how you've got individual switches uh, for each pickup. Uh, now I haven't actually, I haven't plugged this one in at all. I don't even know if it works. It has the original strings. Bridge. Oh, come on then. Where are we? Ah, out of tune. But with the switching, you can have all sorts of things doing all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, so yeah, this, it, it needs some work. I'm interested in taking it apart, looking at the wiring, looking at the insides. The, the fretboard is absolutely uh, dry as all hell. It needs to be uh, um, revived. Um, <coughs> I wanna look at how the routing is done. We've got a roller bridge on there. Uh, the, the finish is coming off a little bit. Uh, the frets are almost certainly gonna re need some work. The fret ends are not particularly comfortable. Um, it's a plasticky nut. I don't know if we want to replace that or not, but um, yeah, it's a fairly cool, relatively inexpensive instrument. I think they're selling for about seven or 800 pounds at the moment. Um, uh, probably a lot less than that uh, if, you, if you can find one for a bargain. And uh, yeah, I, th I thought it was a cool thing to play with. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this as a project guitar on the channel soon, and then we'll just put it up for raffle and uh, um, with a, we'll reduce, we'll put a limit on the amount of tickets sold because I don't want to, you know, uh, it would feel weird selling you know, a couple of thousand pounds worth of tickets for a guitar that's worth only 800 quid or so. So, uh, yeah. What do you guys think? And what do you guys suggest? Uh, Jamie Krakamer says, nothing quick about... Uh, individual switches absolutely true but it does open up cool possibilities paul needs says that's been a nice little three-hour session ben thanks and for the answer i was correct in what i thought um go to the ready says been looking forward to looking to the seeing the local guitar i got this at the local uh, guitar shop sm Meyer says why get rid of the spoke wheel i'm not a fan of spoke wheels i mean i suppose we could still do it i it, it's just it's just one of my things It's very, very not, um, spoke wheel is not vintagey. Spoke wheel is very modern. Uh, and I'm wanting modern with, or well, vintage with a modern twist, not vintage with, hey, whack, slap you with a little bit of modern as well. So we'll see, I don't know. Um, uh, that's a good point, Shane. We could uh, uh, we could use a portion of the money raised from all of these to go to GGBO, which actually is not a bad idea at all. Um, so not necessarily limit the tickets, sell as many tickets as uh, as would sell, but uh, limit it, and then you know, ten percent of whatever goes to GGBO. Or uh, I, I have to make back what I paid on the guitar so I can buy the next one, so that there can be another guitar in the you know in the series. But uh, I do agree. Um, cool. Okay. Um, look, I'm going to call it a day. 
I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very much for sticking this out. It's been a relatively uneventful afternoon. I finished a base, I showed you a new prototype and uh, given you a sneak peek of what the next build is going to be or the next little project is going to be. I think this will be, um, this will probably be Monday's live stream actually. Let's do that. Um, taking this apart will be Monday's live stream, 11 o'clock uh, Monday morning and uh, yeah, it'll be a repair, restoration and a cool thing. Uh, in the meantime, have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, I'll see you Sunday night for the Q&A, if you're about. If not, Monday. If not, I mean, do you need to question your life choices, really, if you don't have enough time to watch my live streams? Or, no, wait, you have to question your life choices because you've got enough time to watch my live streams? Which one is it, Tanya? Oh, Tanya, <laughs> that was a, I'm not answering that one. Uh, fantastic, everybody. I love you. I'll see you soon. Uh, yeah, goodbye.